Okay, so the um, files uh, that are included in the, this um, example, again, usually we have a readme file that describes the problem. Uh, we have the run file that should give you all the results uh, in, in a single run. Um, we have a trellis journal file defining the problem uh, and we'll look into this right away. So let's open trellis. with the journal editor and open our unit cube file. Um, and uh, well, it's not a very interesting um, example from the geometry, so I'll simply run it. Uh, it defines a lot of areas uh, and a very simple geometry, a unit cube, which has a size of um, one by one by one, uh, and it will, is meshed with five elements in each direction. Um, so the volume is called vol, uh, and the node sets here uh, are actually called, or the side sets are actually called like uh, the um, directions on the compass. So we have the east, east, east face, the north face, uh, the west face, and the south face, and we have a top and the bottom face, uh, which are denoted by side sets. And similar is done for the lines. So L and E is the northeastern corner. Uh, and for the points is similar. Uh, we have, for example, the northwest bottom corner here. Okay, so this very simple example, uh, it's actually the point is to show you what happens if we apply electric field uh, from the top to the bottom to this unit cube and see how it deforms due to the piezoelectric effect. So, so much for the geometry. So let's close trellis. No, we don't need to save. Um, it has actually created the unit cube.cdb file, which is the input for CFS analysis. Let's open oxygen to look at the input file, which is called piezostatic XML. The input the XML input uh, for the piezoelectric coupled um, example. We have the material file. Uh, let's maybe look at the start uh, into uh, how to define a piezoelectric material in OpenCFS. This is done by defining the material tensors. So here we have the tensor. You have to specify the full material tensors uh, which is six by six for the elasticity tensor. And you have to define the three by three tensor for the uh, electric properties here. You can again see that we have defined the uh, three direction here, uh, which is distinct from the others, uh, defining the transverse, uh, the axis for the transversally isotropic material. And similarly, we have the coupling tensor here, um, which is three by six, uh, and given here in this form, also the typical form for uh, the piezoelectric transversely isotropic material. Um, when we look at the coupling um, analysis, we first have our PDE list for, where for the first time we have two entries. We have a mechanic PDE uh, with rather standard boundary condition. Uh, we fix three nodes such that we have a statically determined system and do not over constrain our unit cube. Uh, and we define me mechanic displacements and mechanical strains as output quantities. 
Uh, and now we have a second PDE in this list, which is the electrostatic PDE, again defined on the same volume uh, with electric boundary conditions, ground and potential at the top and the bottom surface respectively, and the electric outputs. And finally, we have defined a coupling list. We define direct coupling. Uh, the coupling is piezo direct. Uh, and here we have to define the region in which this coupling occurs. It is the same region, the only region we have in the model, uh, which is called volume. And additionally, we have a store results tag for this coupling, where we define the mechanical stress and the electric flux density. We need to define these uh, output quantities here and not in the single PDE, uh, since these output results by the material law actually depends on the results from both PDEs. So this is an important part, uh, define them in the coupling. You could also put them in here, but then you will get incorrect results because they are only taken from the single PDE. Okay, some file um, to run CFS. We can use the CFS command uh, and the job name will be just test. Uh, the input is defined with the P flag, P and the name of the input file. So let's run it. It ran rather quickly, um, in half a second. Um, so let's look at the result. Uh, you can already see we have a Paraview state file provided. So we'll use load this state file for the Paraview. So let's open up Paraview. And load our state file with file load state select the state file and you can use the file names from the state file. Um, and here we have our result. Uh, you see in the visualization pipeline, there's already a few things defined. Uh, we have first loaded our result files, then we show the deformed geometry uh, and we also show the original um, uh, geometry uh, with an opacity value defined. So you can see how it, the cube looked originally. If we deform it, um, you can see it shrinks in the direction of the electric field and expands uh, into the other direction. Uh, so in the X and Y, uh, in the X, Y plane, there's an expansion and a shrinkage in the Z direction. We can also visualize uh, with the vector plot uh, the electric field, uh, which is pointing from the top to the bottom in this example. 